uh, I want to thank, uh, let me tell y'all this here. I do have bell palsy, okay? So a lot of times I'm trying to say things that won't come out, and I might ask y'all what I'm trying to say, and I know I ask. <laughs> so, you know, I might kind of demonstrate what, what it's like, and y'all gonna have to help me out, because it will not come out for nothing. So I want y'all to know when I get to that stage what's happening, okay? <laughs> so uh, when uh, Marlene, when I got the call, I think I think I finally met her over here. <laughs> Uh, she called me and asked me if I would do this, and I told her yes before I knew it, because I don't do stuff like this. I want y'all to know that I do not, <laughs> I don't stand in front of people and I don't talk and do things like that. And before I know it, I had said yes. And because I wanted this history out, <clears throat> I knew it was very important, and it's something that needs to be known, and I knew that I was running across too many people coming to Lincoln Center, did not know that Lincoln Center was Lincoln High School. And I wanted everybody to know that. So quite naturally, I said yes before I even knew I was saying yes. <laughs> but anyway, first I uh, want y'all to know that Lincoln Center had to be a school before it become a center. It was a school before it became a center. And I wanted everybody to know that is where I graduated from in 1962, Lincoln High School. And I thought people need to know that that was our school. It also is the place where most blacks got their education from. That was the only school that we could go to at that time. And that is where we went and we got our education. So I wanted people to know that. It is part of us now. Wherever you see, I got my shirt on, I'm trying to let you. <laughs> but anyway, Lincoln Center, when I go to Lincoln Center, I felt like I'm a part of it because that is where I grew up, that is where our teachers were, and they taught us. The other thing is that uh, at that time, the school was called uh, Lincoln, and in consolidated Negro High School. The name was changed later on, but that is what the school was called. It, the school got its beginning in 1941. Also, uh, during that particular time, we had one and two teachers that took it upon themselves to teach. And the way they did, why they did that was at um, Washington Chapel Baptist Church, if you know where Washington Chapel Baptist Church is, that was one of the places that I, was our school at the time. We, and some of the classes, they had one teacher teaching, and some of them, we had two teachers that were teaching. The other, the other school was, uh, St. Matthew's, and you know, St. Matthew's is a church that's on Holloman, Holloman Drive, Holloman, Holloman Street, <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, at that particular, and then after that, uh, the high school uh, students were transferred to Bryant over at Kemp at that time. Also, during that particular time, in Washington Chapel Church, we had Mrs. Owens and Mr. Tara. They taught at those schools, at you know the elementary. That's when you know we started out at the elementary. Also, Miss, uh, Mrs. Kerningham was the teacher at St. Matthew's School, and Mrs. Campbell. We also had a school down in Wellborn, Texas, which was for the kids. Okay, and then it says for seven years, grade one through twelve. They, uh, they were housed, we had seven, a seven room building. Our older people were just trying to teach, we were just trying to make sure that we got an education. So therefore they used what we had. And that first, like I said, then we end up getting a seven room frame building on Eleanor Street. That's where we are, you know, Eleanor Street, <laughs> between uh, uh, Holloman, and Lincoln was on Eleanor Street at the time. Okay, uh, and even though when we were going to school to learn it, we, there were no library, we didn't have no library at all to uh, 
to the youth. And, and also the books, after we got off into school, the books that we had, they were books that had been used, they had been sent from Consolidated, all of the, the uh, left-hand side where you write your names at, we, we didn't have a place to write our name in our books because in the, back in the day, we had to write our names in our books. But they were already full, used up, or the books might have even been even torn. It didn't make us no difference. We were just our teachers, we were, we were trying to get an education. Uh, then our shop, it was added by some of our woodmen. People that were taking wood classes, that's how we got one of our first shops built. Okay, we, uh, okay, let me go ahead on. Then during that particular time, Mr. Terrell was not our principal, uh, Mr. Cunningham. It was a guy, a teacher out of Bryan, Texas, him and his wife, both they taught uh, down at Lincoln. Now I'm kind of going back on this stuff, some of this was in 1941, I'm letting y'all know, then I have to get down to, to, six, to the 60s. <laughs> uh, let's see. Also, let me tell you, in 1942, is when uh, Lincoln had that first graduation, and I want you to know that also Shirley's aunt was one of the six to graduate. The girl is going to speak Lola here. Yeah, Lola, Lola Robinson. That was her dad's sister. So we also, she's going to speak. But out of the six that graduated in 1941, one of them was her aunt. Also, uh, Mr. Tara became Lincoln principal and he was, he remained our principal at Lincoln School until it burned in 1966. Uh, also, uh, 1949, let's see, we had four rooms, a four room new high school. That's when they uh, constructed our four room high school that was somewhere on this <laughs> But anyway, we had a four-room high school. In 1954, that's when we got our home economic building was built. Okay, in 1953, Lincoln was accredited by the state uh, of education. It says, uh, hold on, let me let's see. I'm just kind of going through this stuff, giving y'all a little bit of idea of, of of the school. Also, uh, there were five acres now over there on Eleanor and between Eleanor and uh, Holloman. Five acres is what belongs to Consolidate, I mean, uh, Lincoln at the time. So that's where our school was setting on five acres. Uh, the doors were open after they built those four in 1942. Okay. Uh, Okay, it was in 1906 when a and Consolidated Independent School District received notice that the advancement of colored people uh, were requesting uh, that the schools be integrated. So that happened in 1960. Uh, the plan was at that particular time was to stair step integration, and that was six years old go this year, and they would move up to second grade. And then the next year, six years old, uh, would, would start school, start going, okay. Uh, Lincoln School were Okay, hold on, y'all. <laughs> and during that particular time, I'm going to and from, uh, the teachers were there. They, they, they were resigning after the integration got in. Some of them started resigning, and some of them were sent to Consolidated, and some of the teachers from Consolidated were sent over to Lincoln. Uh, 
Y'all have to bear with me a little bit. Yeah, I just kind of. <laughs> And I'll back up a little bit. You know, uh, when the school burned, uh, nobody, they never did come up with a cause to why Lincoln burned down. Uh, all we know is that they were having an outdoor class over there that night when the school went up in flames. And some of them thought that maybe integration was just coming in too slow to start out sixth grade this year and they move on. That was pretty slow. That's going to take years before integration come in. So some it was kind of speculated at that particular time that maybe it was going too slow. And that, that I mean, that's what we're seeing after the school burned. Also, hold on. <laughs> Y'all know what? I lost all my notes. <laughs> yeah. Just a second, y'all. I, I didn't want to kind of read off my paper here. but uh, And also, I want to say this, too. Lincoln Center, being the place where we got our, our education from, the only thing that did not burn were the brick part, which was two elementary classrooms. The part where our auditorium was, where and our choir room, and the gym, those were the only places that did not burn when they burned it up. So that's another reason that that let us know that Lincoln Center, as it is now, mean a lot to us because it's part of the places where we went and got our education. That's where we played ball. That's where we had our prom. And you name all, everybody that went to Lincoln got a different memory of what really happened there. And I do have, I have a few guys here that can kind of tell you the movement of um, the reason we have Lincoln Center and there, especially the gym, which they were going to change that over, but some of the guys, they organized, and they saved the gym, and that you know, kind of gave us a little push to keep going. Otherwise, I imagine the gym would have been destroyed. But we tried to keep as much of Lincoln School as possible over there to let people know that that, that's, that mean a lot to us. That spot over there, those five acres, that is part of us. And uh, while I'm thinking about it, let me get this out before I forget it. If any of you all in here right now have any ideas or any ways then maybe y'all can help us get a sign put out there that letting people know that that was a black school, as they call it in the, in the, uh, in the letter and all of this history that they got, the black Negro school. But a lot of people don't know that. Whatever you want to put it, but let them know that that is the spot where the black school stood in College Station. It was the only one here. That's the only place, and we want to feel like we are part, still part of this neighborhood. You know, we're, we're kind of getting pushed out all around everywhere, but we want people to know that particular spot is still where we went to school and we want it to be recognized as still part of us. So I'm saying if anyone out here now that got any kind of connection or know any way that maybe we could get a big sign of some kind of way, Letting people, when they stop at the stop sign coming this way, that, that's what that is, Lincoln Center is. Even though it was a school, but it's still part of us. If you think, somebody can give me just a brief write-up, I will get, I work with the metal casting company here in Texas. Uh -huh. We'll see what we can do to make that happen. Well, thank you so much, young lady. I'm so appreciative. <laughs> thank you so much. And uh, well, that, those that if you go in there, that is the uh, only part that that didn't get burned is is the gym, the two brick building, which is where we seniors meet at every day over there. We still letting people know that we're still part of that, even though we might be walking a little bit crippled. But we do still go over and try. <laughs> we still go over and try to support the seniors and anybody else that want to come over there and feel part. Because Lincoln was about love. Our teachers, even though they taught us, 
that they were there for us when we needed them. Uh, you know, our, our families were together. Our preachers, our church, they all backed us up. Whenever we went to play ball or had anything going at Lincoln, you can rest assured that it was a family thing. You know, at that particular time, you had your mama, your daddy, your granny, anybody else that, 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 they, that they went and they supported. I don't know what happened along the way, but I want y'all to know that we were loved by our teachers. They were so concerned about trying to make sure that we made it. They helped us, and they were there for us. Uh, also, I want y'all to know, uh, this is a replica of what Lincoln looked like before it burned. Now, you, you know, when y'all come up, you can look, but you know, this is the part of the school, but they kind of put a little stuff around about all of the houses that were kind of down each one of these streets, so you can kind of see the street it is named. Annium uh, did this for us. Some students from Annium, they, we, to the best of our knowledge, uh, we had to tell them kind of what the school was like. And so when you come up here and look, you just have to look down Eleanor Street in Holloman because that is where our five acres uh, were. So, but the rest of them are houses that were around. Uh, I think I had a little bit more to say, but I can't, I can't find it now <laughs> to, to remind y'all. So meanwhile, while I'm thinking about that, I'll just let Shirley come up. And oh, might have, by the way, then I'll. Well, uh, I just had a real quick question. Did the whole that building burn as well? No, I'm sorry, I didn't leave that out. The home economic building, they just pushed that down a few months ago. I ran out to try to take pictures of it before I said goodbye to it, but <laughs> I, did, I, I did put them on my camera and I don't, I can't find where they are. But it was the, the home economic building which set out. Uh, the shop didn't burn, sorry about that. But the brick building now used to be our shop and our science room, and that didn't burn. So you would still see part of that still sitting there. The part that you see sitting there now is the part that didn't burn, which was our science room, our shop, our home economic building, and the two elementary classrooms, and the, uh, our auditorium and our choir room, which is still there, and the gym. Those are the ones that did not get destroyed. And you know, it's so strange about when the fire was going on as I was looking through some of the paper, it took one truck 15 minutes to get there. And then it took the other truck 10 minutes to get there. And then nobody wrote nothing in the records uh, about what may have happened, you know, it was, kind of like nobody wanted, I don't know, but anyway, they didn't really give you any, any kind of information on about how, that, how the school burned. Uh, they just said the wind blew and got it going. Uh, people came around, standing around, trying to see the fire, got in the way, or whatever. Those, those were kind of the excuses that were given at that uh, particular time of the things that happened. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about the neighborhood and when it was established? Do you know? Uh, you know, I, I, mean, it, it I, did, I do have it in some of the notes of about it. I really can't go exactly back to that. But. Uh, so there were a lot of houses were not built until the 70s. Well, that's, yeah, I'm that's, that's the okay. Was there that. The area oh. was established in the late 1930s. Mm -hmm. that, that old area. And I want you to remember that. Oh, what it, uh -huh. I still live there, actually. And, you know, so that's just a little part of you. There's probably a number of us <clears throat> that remember that night and, and how, um, because I remember my mom said, what do we do to help? Yeah. Uh, while we're on the business of the fire, there was some, there's a, a family that have been very important to, to 
this area uh, and it included Cal Boygan. And um, he mentioned that uh, at the time the fire was started by some white and black people who had decided that it had to, that that was the only way to promote change. And so it was actually deliberately started. And that is, at any rate, it sounds like a rumor and it probably is, but it's, but, not, but, but, but it's not documented. Yeah, but but there are people who have um, the mentioned that that was what it was integration. Was that the, like, because they were trying to promote integration and it wasn't happening, it wasn't happening quickly enough and it didn't seem as though it would come to fruition, whatever. Uh, Henry? Uh, I was talking to a lady, a neighborhood lady, about a couple of weeks ago. She's by name, four, and five years old. Her name was O.C. May Walker. And uh, she was telling me about asking, speaking of the community. Yeah. And I can't give you an exact date, but you can, if the lady is 94 and 95 years old, you can. And go back to the <laughs> And how many of you know about the Mirror and uh, Mary and Q and Yeah. That neighborhood used to be black. And uh, Mary Ann Hugh and Mary Ann Hugh were the neighbors. And then she says, wish, I wish we could, you could get her up here to speak to you. She has a lot of history. She said that right there along Holloman Drive, they start selling property there for a little or nothing. Which tells me that the Anglo, I'm going to use the word Anglo, okay? <coughs> wanted that property where Mar Marion Pugh's uh, house was. So therefore, they start selling that property. That's some of the, I guess, people that had the property they wanted to say, okay, let's move the black folks in this particular neighborhood. And that's the, that's the, that's the bottom line to that little history of what she was telling us, telling me about. So uh, you can start doing the math yourself to figure that out. And um, someone asked a question a few minutes ago. And it is hell, you know. <laughs> well, I didn't say that right. It is hell, you know. Question to the choir. I had a question a few minutes ago. I think it was, it was you. And what was your last question? Uh, about the home act building. And oh, the yeah. Park. I live in that. <laughs> I live in that home economic building. From 1967 to 1972, then I went back to college. Uh, I had a wife and a little girl. So I had an opportunity to, of course, that we knew W.T. Beal when we were in school because he was a superintendent of school. So when after Lincoln burned down, I went over and asked him. I needed a place to stay with my wife and my little girl, so he gave me permission to stay in there for thirty dollars a month, no utility. <laughs> 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 yes, it was a good deal. So that uh, so uh, like I said, I stayed there until then the school and when I graduated. That's kind of probably another question I can't think of it right now. <laughs> Well, I, that's what I just said, talking about the neighborhood and what this 94, 95 year old lady told me about Mary Q and her mm -hmm. father of town. And I was in there and said, so. Thank you. And while I'm talking, let me know uh, uh, Lincoln got his name, the name, oh, sorry. <laughs> It was in uh, 1946 is when the, name, the uh, Lincoln changed from A&M Consolidated Negro School to 
Lincoln High School, and that was in 1946 when we got our name. And we started finding our identities. And uh, we, we got our song, which is, Old Lincoln, How We Love You. We got our uh, camper, our mascot. So our song and, 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 and our motto is, forward forever, backwards never. And we are still trying to go forward. So, like I said, back again, y'all can help us. We, we, we all say any kind of help. <laughs> we get to keep going forward. Uh, I'll say that now. I'll turn you over to Shirley here. If anything else come up, I'll just get up and uh, <laughs> I will say it. <laughs> I forgot to let y'all know that uh, God's grace is sufficient. And I had told y'all that I don't do stuff like that, but Lord have mercy, you know, I got Lord God here with me, y'all. And I was just here to pray, and he said, I didn't do it. Lord have mercy, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everyone that came out to be with us, Lord. We thank you, and we ask you that you would give us all the truth that happened during the time that we were coming up in the school. We were, we were part of the movement. We're a part of what happened. And thank you, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over you. Covers everyone in here, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I forgot I supposed to have been brought God first, and I didn't. <laughs> and I'm so sorry, Lord. <laughs> Let's give Lucille a hand again. She was very nervous about um, she was very nervous about coming and doing this, but as I told her, I said, Lucille, you have a lot of information on the inside of you. I said, so when you stand up, it's just gonna come out. I mean, because she, she's always talking, I don't know why she said she wasn't a talker, but uh, you know. <laughs> Maybe in front of a room full of people, but one or two people at a time, that makes a room full, right? Right. But, but um, as I look at this replica, I'm, I'm, I didn't realize it was a replica of the school until Lucille made mention of it. Well, um, my family, my, my sister and I were raised up with my grandmother, and we lived right, my grandparents, and we lived right here, okay? This was our house right here. So one day, my grandmother was home from work, which was rare. <laughs> she worked at Park Cleaners, which is still there. She was home from work, and... Um, there were some kids, like a girl and a boy, let me just say it like this, on this side of the gym. And for some reason, she thought it was me. <laughs> I have no idea why she would think that that was me, and she was home and could see me out the window. And so she was, I understand, she said she would just kept, kept yelling, Shirley, Shirley, you better, get, you better get back in that classroom. And um, when I got home, I said, Mother, you know, I, I call her mama, I'm sorry, I call my mother, that's my mother over there, I call her mother. And I call my grandma, I said, mama, you know, that wasn't me. I'm, you, I was in class, as always, so. Yeah, that, that was a, a, a fond memory there. But um, I was um, privileged um, to be a part of Lincoln School. Uh, growing up. I actually, uh, we lived right across the street from school in walking distance. Everything was in walking distance. Um, Hollick store. This is mine, Lucille. Okay. This is yours right okay. here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, so we walked to school. Uh, our church was in the neighborhood. We walked to church. Hollick's grocery store was up the street. We walked to the store. Um, very rarely, well not very rarely, we went to town, what we call quote unquote town, on Sundays, on Saturdays, I'm sorry, because nothing was open on, on, on Saturdays, and that was downtown Bryan, and so it was so amazing, I'm going to tell the story, and then I'm going to get on to um, um, what, I, what I need to talk about, about the integration and in education. Um, I, I've been away back in, you know, different states and, and cities, but um, my, our, our two sons were born in Alaska, and so when um, we came, moved back to Texas. I wanted to show them downtown Bryan. Now y'all know that there was nothing there <laughs> by, by the time I, we got back in 85. So, uh, but I, I was so excited. I wanted them to see the parade and I went and they, and they stood and they looked, they did like this and then they go, mama, can we go to the mall? <laughs> so, <laughs> 
But I was just so excited just to show them history. History is important to all of us, you know, and no matter where you grew up, no matter, you know, what town, what city, it's, it's important. So um, I am so proud. I've all, we've always wanted to come back home, though. I'm so proud of College Station, Bryan College Station area. I love this place. I love being home. Um, I was one of the first students, along with my sister and my cousin and some other people, other students that enrolled in Consolidated in 1965. We had a choice, okay? That was before the school burned down. So we had a choice to go to a and Consolidated. And so um, even though with that choice, we didn't, you know, as students, we didn't realize that we couldn't walk to school anymore. We, there was no buses taking us, right, from our community to A&M Consolidated. So that was my first experience of carpooling. Miss Mary Washington was one that took my sister and I and several of We all kind of like, you know, loaded up in cars and they took us to school every morning and picked us up. Um, but I, I, I do remember our, my first day there um, it was very cordial. Um, it was very frightening. It was a new experience, a different experience that uh, we had never had before. Um, a new interaction with teachers and students. Uh, at Lincoln, all of our teachers were black. At A&M Consolidated, all of our high school teachers were white. And so, um, but I remember that we never felt like we were, so to speak, out of place. Um, and in reading a little bit of the history that Lucille printed uh, for us, for me to, to, to review, what I learned is that we all were prepared to meet each other. Uh, the, the, we as black students were prepared, and I understand that there was an announcement made over the intercom at n m Consolidated to say that we were coming and that um, we were made to feel welcome. You, you see what I'm saying? So both of us, both groups were prepared for meeting each other, interacting with each other for the first time on a regular basis. You know, we, we, we knew each other in the different stores that we, you know, frequented, and, but those were mostly adults. But now we are children. We are young, young kids interacting with each other. So that experience was, was really different, but we were made to feel, to feel welcome. I understand this was one concern of mine as a, as a teenager was that our our, our uh, sports, our, our athletes could not participate in athletics that first year. You know, the ones that played football, basketball, any kind of sports, you know, girls, females or males, they could not participate that first year. But we could participate in everything else. Um, <clears throat> so I was in the choir. I, well, okay, I was looking at the information I don't know if y'all can see this, but that's me right there. <laughs> that was my senior year in high school at a and Consolidated. And I, when I was flipping through the pages, I go, oh, that's me. And I'm going to read you what it said about me. It said, Shirley Robinson Payton and Paul Stewart Garvin, which is my cousin that lived right across the street, uh, came to a and Consolidated School as a senior. I was a senior, he was a junior, respectively, in the fall of 1965. Shirley attended Lincoln School from first grade through 11th grade. Now, I was telling my 14-year-old granddaughter, 14 and 10-year-old granddaughters this morning, this when, when I took them to school. I did not realize that they didn't really know this about their Nana. They, they didn't. And I said, you know, I know a lot of military families and when kids are like going from, you know, their, their, their fathers or their mothers or being transferred to other cities and they have to go learn a new school and new teachers and everything. And I said, a lot of them, it really is devastating to them when they have to go their last year of school. And I said, so Nana enrolled in Consolidated my last, my senior year, and y'all know that was, a prom year, and my, even though my sister said I've been going to prom since I was eighth grade, that's not true. I don't know why she says that. But um, 
So it says here that 11th grade, during her senior year, she won first place awards in trio ensemble, which is music, concert choir, and girls chorus. Um, she graduated as a member of the first integrated class of NM Consolidated High School. Um, I'm gonna show them this this evening, because I didn't realize <laughs> that this was there, but um, I was able to participate in music um, with Mr. Coulter. I don't know if anybody in this room know, remembers Mr. Coulter. Yeah, that was a dear, sweet man. Dear, dear, sweet man. I mean, and he almost, he like, he like took us under his wings. There was my cousin, Dernice, uh, Dernice Wilburn, and my best friend, Barbara Carroll. And so we were uh, a trio. And he made us practice, practice. We sang at the Aggie Follies, and uh, we went uh, on different uh, choir concerts and everything. Um, so he was kind of like our comfort person there, teacher. Um, I, I, I must say that in the transition of being at NM Consolidated, things were different. As Lucille told you, our books were hand-me-down books, if so to speak. They were used books. Uh, some of the pages were torn out, right? Some of the, uh, the information was not relayed uh, to us like they were printed in the books because we didn't have all the information because some of it was torn out. So um, when I got to and m Consolidated, the structure of the classroom, the learning experience was totally different. So I worked very hard because I always made A's and I worked very hard to maintain that. And so I had to do that because I wanted to not only prove to myself, but others, that there was no learning deficit in blacks and white. You know, that we all learned, we all could learn. Uh, I had one teacher, I cannot think of her name, I said I would never forget her name, but she was my history teacher. Uh, she gave us a pop quiz every day. And I remember like the first week of, the cl of class, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm sure this is not gonna happen every day. <laughs> but it did, it kept on. So that means that I had to go home every night and just study because I knew she was gonna give us a pop quiz every day. But Mrs. I, Mrs. huh? Mrs. No, now Mrs. Mrs. Sp huh? Mrs. No, she, she had a, a Mrs. thank you, <laughs> Mrs. Hensley. Thank you. Mrs. Hensley, I, I said I would never forget her name, but it, and I, I even tried to look it up, Google it, you know, before I came yesterday, and I'm thinking, well, I cannot remember her name, but yes. I mean, and she was rough. She was rough on everybody, you know, on everybody. At first I thought it was just us, you know, because we were black, but no, I noticed that it was not that. She was rough on everybody, Mrs. Hensley, a pop was every day. But um, I think it was, I, can't, I think Mrs. Sperry was our, typing teacher, I'm not sure it was mine. But anyway, I, I wanna share this story about her and um, every time I think about this story, I, I didn't realize it until I got older. You know, some things happen in your early years that you don't realize how people are protecting you and you don't, you know, you just think that's the way it is. You know, like guys, when we went to the Palace Theater downtown, we went upstairs, I, we had fun, we it wasn't. It? Didn't really bother us at first that we couldn't go into the main entrance, and we just went on upstairs, paid our money, ate our popcorn, had fun, and everything. So, but I, I remember participating in a typing contest. I was in a typing class at AM and m Consolidated, and I, I remember participating, going, we went out of town to another city um, to participate in a typing contest, and I was the only black student in the group. And um, she made, she had made sandwiches for us, a box, you know, a lunch for us. And uh, th I really remember this. The only reason I remember this is because I don't like mayonnaise. And so, <laughs> but I remember the sandwiches had mayonnaise on it. And um, so, uh, but we all, she had prepared these lunches for us. And it did not dawn on me until way in my adult years that she made those sandwiches as a protection for me because we could not, they could not go into the restaurants with me with them. And so every time I think about that, 
every time, you know? And I never, it didn't dawn on me that that was what, why she did that. Because I'm thinking, you know, all the other schools, you know, they were going to the restaurant, you know, because it was a break time and she had lunch and, you know, for all of us. And I remember we, we sat in the car and ate it. But I, I realized that, you know, and so, you know, things you not, you don't think that uh, people are protecting you and they really are, you know, and so I, 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 I think that was Miss Ferry. I think it was, I'm not sure, but I know that, I know what she looks like. I, I always remember what she looks like, but that was, that was such a blessing. And um, so upon graduating, uh, in my class uh, before, at Lincoln, we had like, would have had like maybe 23. That was probably about the biggest. I think y'all had probably the biggest class that there was, right? We had 18. 18? Oh, I don't know. Some, somebody had 32, but we had like, would have had like 23 if we had. But, and, and when I graduated as a senior and, and at Consolidated, we graduated on the football field. Our ceremony was on the football <laughs> field because it was like, we're all lines and lines and lines of kids. Um, but we were always, um, uh, made to feel welcome, and it just seems like it was a natural thing to do. And I'm glad that they didn't do, I'm, I'm not glad about, you know, the school burning down. I don't know about, you know, the rumors or whatever behind that, but I'm glad that they, that the progression was sooner rather than later, because I think that we all gain from the experience of being together. You know, uh, you, know you learn from different cultures, um, yeah. No matter whether it's black, white, whatever, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. And so we grow, we learn, and we grow from different cultures. Um, one thing, I, uh, two things I wanted to mention, and um, oh, that made me really proud, and then I'm, I'm going to be done here shortly, but um, there was a meeting, um, like maybe several years before the integration started, and uh, there was a, I'm like Lucille now, I had, oh, called the Citizens Fellowship, okay? And so they gathered together, and that's how this all got started. That was in um, 1958. And it, was, it consisted of, and I see this name over and over in this article, Dr. Kasten. I, I have no idea who they were, but, sorry? It's, okay, it says K-A-S-T-E-N, Kasten. Oh, that says misspell? Okay, <clears throat> okay, well that person um, and his wife and his family, I, I, it, it indicates that they took a big risk. And you know, so it was a big, and, and getting this started, it was a big risk on both sides because I learned here that uh, mother, I'm, I'm talking to my mother over there now, mother raise your hand, raise your hand mother, that's my mother right there. <laughs> okay. So there was a meeting prior, like, okay, so I enrolled in 65. So in 1960, October 24th, uh, Dr. Cashin, is that how you pronounce it? How, how, different one? Okay. Um, well, he and his family, they were the one that, were, that or he was like the, the initiator of organizing uh, a community group, both blacks, whites, you know, ministers, people from all walks of life to come and, and let's see what we can do to get this integration started. And so the, he, there was a letter that went around that people signed. But also there was a meeting on October 24, 1960, the A&M Consolidated Board of Trustees meeting and in attendance, which really made me proud, um, was my grandfather and my grandmother. Their names are on this list, on both sides, so my mother and my father. My, and see, my, by being raised by my grandparents, you know, they, they had to work. They didn't have time for, you know, come see your science project, all that kind of stuff, you know. But to know that they were at this meeting before 1965, that they wanted their grandkids to be uh, 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 to get a, a, a higher education or a better education or a different education, um, that, that really brought um, like tears to my eyes. And a lot of the community um, people that were, and, and Lucille, your name is on here. I don't know why your name is there. You're not that old. <laughs> Lucille's name is on here. 
Lucille's name is on here, and um, Lucille Washington. So I know that's what I said. <laughs> Um, so there were a lot of people that were instrumental in our communities, y'all, so we are proud. We, we are very proud of our people, mentally. We are very proud of our people that, um, yeah. So I, I think that I am about done. <laughs> uh, one other thing I mentioned, uh, and I learned a lot, oh, two things. I learned a lot about, in reading this information, that I was not aware of as growing up. I didn't realize why we always had a post office box. I didn't know the reason behind that. We always, our box number was 2802. P.O. box, that was our box number for the Stewart family, 2802. And I didn't know that the reason we had a post office box was because there was no mail being delivered to our area. And I didn't know, I just, Oh, Mom and Daddy wanted the post office box, you know? So, because when, we, when um, we moved back here at home from Alaska, I remember we got a post office box, and so I kept that post office box for years and years and years. And then one day I was in there to close that box, and there was a student closing the bo a box, uh, an M a cons uh, Aggie, closing her box. And they asked her, what's your box number? And she said, 2802. <laughs> and I go, oh! was my grandparents' box number back, oh, years and years and years ago. So those things, you know, and then I learned another thing. Uh, one summer, I don't know, uh, I if y'all remember this, but one summer, there was a bus that came through our neighborhood from First Baptist Church. Now, um, I understand that the minister of First Baptist Church was instrumental as part of this group, too. But I, I and I didn't know that um, until I was reading this, that they were part of a bigger effort than, than just a vacation Bible school. They were trying to get everybody together, but I always remember this song, and we would, they would come and pick us up, and we would get on that bus, and we would go through the community, black and white communities, and we would sing, come to Integrated Bible School at First Baptist Church, and we would sing that, sometimes we would get like, mm-mm, and then sometimes we'd get like, yeah. <laughs> but it was so, you know, like I said, um, all of the history, all the information that uh, has been published, and I'm sure soon to be published, is relevant to us today and to our history and to what we learn about each other and about um, how things came to be. That's, that's important. And, and, and what I, I learned this morning, too, uh, in talking to my granddaughters is that it's important to pass that information on. Like Lucille said, that people should know that uh, that the ground that the Lincoln Center is on is the ground where uh, our school is. Yes. When did you say you graduated? 1960, well, six, I enrolled in 65, graduated in 66. I graduated in 65. 65? Just by year, <laughs> right? <laughs> but anyway, we didn't have school bus service either. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Exactly. And that's how it was at Lincoln, too. Um, because, you know, of course, people live in Welburn, Washington Chapel, or College Hill, they, were, they got bus to Lincoln. But uh, those of us that could walk, you know, was in, you know, a certain radius. Uh, then we, we walked to school. Well, yes. I, she got it. She got the name. It was uphill both ways. Uphill. <laughs> <laughs> both ways, huh? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and snowing and raining. Yes, in Texas. I also. Yeah. As a matter of fact, my class was last past graduate, and I think I said that. So I'm repeating myself. Uh, but, I live in the country, what back then we called Plum Nelly. Plum out of College Station and Nelly by the well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had, it was uh, on the real side, it was about, oh, about a mile. And I had to walk, not around the, uh, the highway, but I cut across the Walker's property. Walking across snakes, cows, bulls, horses, and all that stuff. <laughs> and I couldn't ride the bus. So where was the high school? Hold on, what's now Bush Brown? 
No, it's on Holloman. Holloman and Eleanor. Consolidated, yes, West Nile Bush Drive. And it's a, I think it's an elementary now? It's a middle school? It's a middle school now. So all of that was high school, this, yeah, this side, and then the other was like uh, elementary. Right, first rate this book. Yes. Um, back in the early 60s, um, I was married and Okay, there's a question up front. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. There's a question up front. Back in the early 60s, we lived here, and I was married, and my husband uh, volunteered to do security for camp mm -hmm. because there was some threatening that it might get burned down. Mm. Maybe it's because Lincoln oh. burned that, that uh -huh. there were threats against camp. Mm -hmm. But I, I was just wondering what mm. time-wise Okay, that's what right. was happening, and that was it, mainly the integration time. Mm -hmm. um, plus, did y'all ever use the Carnegie Library for references or books or anything? If we could get there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you could walk. <laughs> but yes, oh, okay. um, and, and, and uh, Brian schools integrated before we did. Ah. Uh, any questions of myself or Lucille? No. Yes. I, 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 I think your education may have been not efficient. My law school class at Texas Tech University, class of 1995, elected one of the most inspiring and eloquent legends in Texas politics to be our Jordan. speaker. Mm -hmm. Okay. She was a young girl at mm -hmm. Wheatley High School in Houston. In debate and speech. Yes. Went on to Boston University, and today her statue is on the University of Texas campus. Mm -hmm. And we elected her, mm -hmm. even though we were mostly a white class. Uh huh. And her it was one of the last speeches she ever gave. Mm -hmm. Her name was Barbara. Barbara Jordan. Jordan. Ah, yes. Right. Very much so. Politicians in the state of Texas. Very much so. Out of Houston, Texas. Out of Houston, yeah. Texas. Wheatley. And uh, Wheatley College, which you, Wheatley High School, out of Houston, Texas. Um, and when you say eloquent, um, let, let me say this, is that we strived always to be the best. Yeah. If you understand what I'm saying. Uh, whether it was the pronunciation of words or whether it was the learning of the more, you know, uh, to, to make sure that even when we did competitions among ourselves and the leagues and all the scholastic uh, competitions, uh, we wanted, and our teachers, that was one thing, our teachers wanted to make sure that we represented ourselves well first and then our schools and our families, because as, as Lucille said, it was all a community effort. Yes, so she, and her stature also is at the airport in Austin. Yes. Right, nurturing, that's, a, that's an excellent part of, of all of our um, upward mobility. Yes. yes, sir. And I believe, mm -hmm. Lucille, did you say that the Lucille. Lincoln did not get accredited until 1960? Well, in, in any event, they were taught before the accreditation. Exactly. And they were taught well. Yes. yes, yes. And there is a distinction that I want to make between being desegregated and being integrated. Mm -hmm. We have been desegregated 
for a long period of time. We are just now being integrated. So don't forget that. We are, we have been desegregated for a long period, but we are just now beginning to be integrated. And I think with our integration, sir, it comes with us learning of each other, acknowledging and respecting each other, our cultures, you know, uh, our understanding our backgrounds. Uh, because a lot of times I don't think we, I think we separate ourselves because we don't know about each other. Yeah. And, 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 and what you will find out that there's a, a more of a common denominator than there is a dividing line uh, when it comes to all of us. Okay, Lucille, I'm, I'm done. Thank you.